Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. Hello little biscuit, how are you doing? I'm really spooky today, girls. Oh, thank you for the little kisses, Mr. Biscuit. You like being wrapped up like this, don't you? You love it, girls. Welcome back to the Chanel, my lovelies. I hope you're having a sufficiently festive October so far. I caught the plague about three weeks ago and I feel like I'm still getting over it right now, which is interesting because lots of the YouTubers I watch are just getting over something right now. I a conspiracy host? Oh, let's not. <laughs> let's not go there. No. A witch. Welcome back to another episode of Unhinged TikTok Beauty Fails, Hacks and Mysteries, girls. I think this is what? Episode 9 now? Episode 9, is that right? It's probably not, is it? No. We've seen some things throughout this series so far, my lovelies, but you already know the tea. You know what we're gonna do. You know what to expect. My profile over on TikTok is xxluxaria. If you happen to see any unscrupulously disastrous or interesting makeup hacks, please send them to me over there or tag me in them. And you never know, it might end up in the next video. Video, my loves. Oh, that's nice. So one of the top comments on the last episode of Unhinged Makeup TikTok Fails Beauty blah, 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 is by Hugh Miller 98 and they say Luxaria and the Welsh twins are becoming the Anne Reardon of makeup and skincare and I'm 100% here for it. Debunking miss and disinformation and also explaining how and why. Do you have an important message? Thank you my love, thank you. Yes, I also actually very much enjoy the Welsh twins content. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I discovered Robert Welsh many, many years ago, and I remember thinking, I know you from somewhere. Turns out he used to work at Mac Pro in Carnaby Street, and I used to be a frequent flyer there back in the day. Interesting that I've also ended up working for Mac at some point in my life. So, thank you, my lovelies. It does seem to come with the territory. So, my lovelies, if you don't know me, my name is Luxaria. I have been a makeup artist for 16 years. Gosh, it's nearly 17 at this point. Ugh. She's an old lady. I mean, look at her. She's dead. And I also have a biochemistry degree because I have a fundamental interest in the way the world works. Well, maybe more like cells. Yes, Mr. Biscuit. With a particular penchant for formulation. So, my lovelies, let's see what we're going to watch today. What are we going to watch today, Mr. Biscuit? We just don't know, do we? So, my lovelies, make sure you're tucked in all nice and warm on this chilly winter's evening. It's October. Get yourself a beverage. Today, I am on the Poop Soilier Max from a bottle. My goodness. Oh, this feels wrong, doesn't it? What's all this about? <laughs> Pop your ohhanger right into your little TikTok hole and let's watch some unhinged beauty hacks, tips and tricks from TikTok, shall we, Biscuit? Yes. Oh my gosh, the first one looks like some sort of lip filler incident. Uh, we don't like these, do we? I've literally gotten bigger by the second. Do you think this is a filter? No, sir. Or Who are you? just catfishing us all? No. I don't think it's a filter because she is crying. She's pretty distraught. Hang on, I don't know who this doctor is, but let me look at this. Jesus, those are some swollen lips. Oh my goodness me. I'm not a stranger to filler. Let's talk a little bit about filler in a moment, but I do want to hear what that doctor has to say, because this is like, this is a lot, this is a lot. I don't know how I'm gonna tell my family and my friend. So if this isn't a filter, I'm thinking this is an allergic reaction to filler. Yes. Uh, yes, you could do a lot of filler to make your lips that large, but the fact that it's just so evenly distributed and so puffy, uh, it makes me think it is more of an allergic reaction. Yes. So if you're in this situation, the uh, one possibility is to take steroids, oral steroids, that can help. And certainly time will, will take care of it all. Right. Well, thank you, Dr. Mystery Man. So let's talk about lip filler, shall we, my lovelies? I am no stranger to a little bit of the uh, injectables, shall we say. I've had a little bit of work done here and there, you know, just a little bit of lip gloss and the like. So you were just lying? <laughs> Quite a lot, actually. When we talk about lip fillers, the kind of lip fillers that are mostly known on the market right now, in fact, it kind of goes across all fillers, really, unless you're going for something a little bit more unusual at this point, which is like straight collagen fillers, or I think Sculptra is a slightly different type of filler as well. I haven't done my research on that one. But the kind of fillers that I have had are called hyaluronic acid based fillers. They kind of look like this. There are multiple different brands. You've got Revelax Deep, which is my personal favorite. You've got Juvederm. You've got Restylane. You've even got new brands coming up from South Korea, which look to be quite promising. So what is a lip filler? What actually is it? What's in a lip filler? So it's hyaluronic acid formulated in a specific way to create these like meshes. 
of hydration, if you like. Hyaluronic acid absorbs water. It holds on to water. In fact, it's incredibly water absorbent. I can't, is it? What's the word? Humectant? No, that's not it. What is the word I'm looking for here? Post-editing luxaria. So the correct terminology is retaining. Hyaluronic acid can retain up to a thousand times its own weight in water. However, this number is disputed. It is disputed. Which is why when things go in and perhaps there's swelling involved, it's going to look a lot worse than it is because your body likes to pump all sorts of nutrients to the area when you're having an allergic reaction. Most of the time that's kind of like if you think about it like passy sort of situations and a lot of the fluids that make up these things are water which is why when you see someone have a reaction to filler it seems to go off the scale swollen not just like oh I'm a little bit upset my, my everything's a little bit out bothered bothered sis she's a bothered woman no it seems to just go off the scale swollen baboon's booty hole situation which is not the tea is it no once again this is one of those things that sometimes it just does happen this isn't necessarily one of those times that I can be like as a makeup artist be like oh this is what's happening this is the tea but as a biochemist my loves there's not a lot you can do once you start having an allergic reaction all you can do is try and take steroids or try and minimize the swelling as much as possible through taking something like Arnica or trying to cool down the area. There's not really a lot you can do apart from ride it out. This does also ask the question though, if you've got this product in your skin and you're having an allergic reaction to it, can that cause further problems down the line? For example, once it's in your skin and you've gone past this allergic reaction, if you ever have to have it topped up or if your immune system ever gets a bit lowered for some reason, maybe you're a bit under the weather with something else, it could potentially re-inflame. If this is a hyaluronic acid based filler that she's had allergic reaction to, I would probably say go to a practitioner, get it dissolved. Hopefully you're not also allergic to dissolver, which ironically is one of those things they test you for. In my like, aesthetic experiences. I don't think I've been allergy tested for sodium, for hyaluronic acid because it's one of those things that we actually produce in our bodies ourselves. It could be a lidocaine allergy, but I'm not familiar with every single formulation of every single filler. So make sure you choose your practitioner correctly. And when you go to like a registered professional, quite often they'll ask you all the relevant questions about your like medical history and the such like. Ha! Oh! Dr. Luxaria girls. Oh, is this the is this the original video? Oh my gosh, this is the original video. Okay, hang on, we have to watch this. So I went to go get my lips done yesterday, and something bad happened. Right. Bitch, I'm so nervous right now. <gasps> it literally gotten bigger. That is so, yeah, that's not the tea. This really sucks because I wonder why looks so, so bad. And of course not because I wonder why looks so bad. And of course not I'm sure it's like, just, you know. Oh, perhaps she's different. never had it done before. No! <gasps> oh, it's so shocking, isn't it? Hi guys, my name is Jessica and I'm auditioning for Euphoria season three. I'm taking Chloe Jerry's place. Poor girl, they are so intense, aren't they? Well, I'm hoping that her swelling went down eventually. Right, what's this one? What's this one, my loves? What's the, oh, here we go. Oh, hang okay. on, hang on a second. Is this another, li okay. Two-faced lip injection, extreme lip gloss fail. Okay, right, so we got, this is very lips. Oh my goodness, two lips, my loves. What's the tea? Okay, um, so I went and bought the two-faced I wouldn't buy anything from Too Faced, no. I went and bought the Too Faced She's got lovely um, eyes. Lip Injection Extreme Lip Gloss because everybody hypes on about it saying it gives you that, you know, that lip injection effect without the obviously injection part. I can't afford lip injections and I was never going to just jump into it and just expect that it would suit me because sometimes it doesn't suit people and <sighs> i was like you know this is a cheap alternative i've seen so many videos like i did heaps of research i'm just going to interject here and say that like a plumping lip gloss is not an alternative for filler fillers are done in a very specific way depending on the type of uh, procedure you have, whether that's a Russian technique where you have like a really sharp line or whether you have something like a dual technique, which is where they do a traditional filling mixed with a Russian style. So you have that little bit of sharpness, but still some volume. Lip filler is also used to change the shape of your lips or to make things more symmetric or balance out different types of lip volume between the upper and the lower. So I wouldn't say that a lip gloss is really an adequate way of being like, oh, 
just like filler. Everyone gets filler. Mm. Right, let's listen. Even some friends, like old friends of mine, used to use it and it was such like a pretty gloss. Is it? And it gave them such a nice plump look. Does it? So I bought it for myself. Um, oh. Oh. I've only just opened it. Oh. <clears throat> so this is what it is. Right. I've only just this opened it. This is the like the extreme and one, isn't I it? I was going to use it next weekend for the races and I the was races? um on my way to the shops and I thought I would just give it a go. Um my son was playing with the wrapper and he actually opened it for me. So I was like, "You know what? I'm just going to use it." And oh. within 2 minutes, my mouth started flaring I'm up on a little the edge bit, of my which own was normal, seat. and then it started traveling all around my lips and up to my nose. Um, I'm in lots of pain. Um, it's really itchy, it's burning, and this is what I look like. Ready? <clears throat> oh my this goodness. This is what I look like. I literally put the tiniest amount on my lips, and I put like one, two, and then I put a little bit there. I went like this. Oh. And that was it. And I just let it sit. I let it sit for two minutes, and then I literally wiped it off with with a makeup wipe oh, and I no, just she's wiped, wiped my lips round. really carefully and this is the result. I don't know if anybody else has had this reaction. I have no idea what is going on right now, but I am in lots of pain. I'm So let's talk a little bit about why these uh, plumping lip glosses work. So quite often they contain a chemical that will genuinely disrupt the skin and kind of make it hurt. That's how they plump. That's how your body goes, oh my God, let's pump loads of nutrients to the area, lots of fluid to make it all big and plump and lovely. You're basically inducing a sort of allergic reaction, except you wouldn't call it an allergy in this instance. I can't remember what the exact word is that you would use. The correct terminology would be that mild irritants in the ingredients cause blood vessels to expand and therefore force blood to rush to the surface of the skin, inducing a temporary but swollen pussy lip effect. But it's putting basically a known chemical irritant, an irritant on the skin to produce an outcome that you want. So it doesn't surprise me that as it's traveled around the lips, it's kind of also bothered the skin around her lips. That doesn't surprise me. I don't know if people actually like know that these lip glosses that cause extreme swelling or cause swelling is purposefully giving yourself an allergic reaction to get that effect. That's why they hurt, that's why they sting, that's why they plump, because if you were to put just like a nice gloss on your arm, like nothing happens, does it really? I mean, unless you're allergic to like plain old gloss. Are you that sort? But as soon as you put something like chili oil with lip gloss on your arm, you're gonna get red, you're gonna get bumpy, you're gonna get that plumping look. You might grow an entire pair of new lips on your arm, girls. Oh dear God. Nobody wants that. That was not erotic to everybody. So I do find it interesting that there are so many of these on the market. I personally, after having lip fillers done, like I don't want to experience pain on my lips. Like I had some really spicy food a little while ago and I just remember it like being on my lips and I was like, this is a deeply unpleasant experience. So I can't imagine wanting to put something purposefully on your lips that's gonna make them really swollen, but only last a little while as well. It doesn't give you the same effect as like an actual lip filler would. It can't change the shape. It can't, you know, give you a gorgeous vermilion border volume. It's not the same. And I don't think it should be advertised as such either. The kind of advertising around lip gloss plumping um, like gels and lip glosses reminds me a lot of back in the mid 2000s, there was a huge problem we had in the UK. In fact, the law actually changed around it. Get the London look. Makeup adverts used to use mascara and be like, Poo, with false eyelashes, as if the mascara was going to give you the same effect as false eyelashes. And it's just not. So now on every sort of mascara advert that uses false eyelashes, they have to say like filmed with lash enhancement. The advertising around like these plumping lip glosses feels the same. Like there is no way a gloss applied to the skin can give you the same effect as an injection of hyaluronic acid. It just can't. And that's the Darjeeling. But because these lip glosses are such an irritant, like the idea that you just try them straight on your lips, to me it goes like, no, anytime I've had a client that's like, plumping lip gloss, I don't want fillers. I'm like, let's not do that. Let's, let's just not do that, please. We can use some techniques to make your lips look fuller. Interestingly enough, what actually is it in the Too Faced Extreme Plumping Gloss that causes what 
is it? What is the chemical? Where is she? That's the bottle, isn't it? Oh, capiscum. Okay, so it literally is like spice. It's what I mentioned earlier. It's literally chili, chili spices. So if you have a problem with chilies, do not try plumping lip glosses. Capiscum resin. Ooh, what's frutisens? It's Tabasco. It's Tabasco pepper. Interesting. And that's the end of that chapter. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're, we're having lots of reactions today, my lovelies. This is definitely a beauty fails video. <gasps> right, okay, I see. I haven't even clicked play yet, and I already see this lady has like... Well, should we listen? I seriously don't think I can emphasize enough. Don't, like, how stupid that was. And oh, why on both is it so much worse when I only did that small area? What happened? What is it? What's, what's the tea? What is it? Who are you? For people looking for context, she put the Too Faced Lip Injunction Plumping Gloss on her cheeks. Ah! Uh, okay, so, why, why? Why? Why is this product on the market? I mean, sure, you could be like, so make sure you're careful, girl. Why is it on the market? Why is it on the market? One of these things that I always say in my videos is that like makeup is a multi-use product. Quite often it is. I mean, I'm no stranger to putting like a gloss on the top of my cheekbone or a gloss on the top of my client's cheekbone if they want that really gentle, soft highlight. In fact, MAC used to do an amazing product that was just straight up called gloss. And it wasn't like their lip gloss. It wasn't sticky. It was just like pure soft gloss. And it was lovely. I don't think they do it anymore, which is so annoying. That would be perfect for something like this. You just want a little bit of light reflectant. Oh, a little bit of pussy gloss. Deranged. And I'm sure there are going to be people in the comments here that are like, I love my pussy pumping gloss 3000 extreme capiscum experience. My lips are bleeding. Thank you, Luxaria. It's not for me and I wouldn't have it in my kit personally. But this does go back to the thing that I say, makeup is multi-use, but when it's something so specific, like a lip plumper, do not put this anywhere else. And please do not put it on your cheeks or your eyes. Goodness forbidden. Not the eyes. So we have another one here. Okay, all right, okay. This is a very specific makeup look I can already see. And I feel like, I might be wrong. I haven't heard it yet, but I feel like this girl's gonna be British because this is a very typical British makeup look. Shall we listen? So I was just having a long, hard think about Tea. my appearance and the way that I've been like walking around with so much confidence when I genuinely look like a fat, sweaty jacket potato. And I just I thought like, so. I just wanna see if I can like paint my face and make myself look like me again. Excuse me. Fucking filthy feline jumping on me. Right, what was, where was I? But even with makeup on, I literally look like that fish off shark's tail. I'm not even joking you. I look like that fish off shark's tail. And I'm fish not laugh loving. Tail. It's my lips. But I can't get them dissolved because, like, I ain't walking around with fucking paper cuts on my fucking face. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm just going to put Love Island on and I'm just going to, like... Eat more food. <laughs> okay, okay, T. I mean, if she loves that, she well, everyone's well, entitled to look the I? way they want. I'm a bit confused about the, the feline hate suddenly throughout that. Okay, so this is a very typical British makeup look. It's not my favorite makeup look. It's not my favorite makeup style, but I think, you know, it does definitely have a place within the makeup consumer world because these girls are basically doing drag every single day and they are keeping the British makeup industry alive and well. What she did say here though, is that she feels like she looks like that fish from Shark Tale. And that says to me that she wants to try something slightly different, try out a new look to make her feel like herself, but look less. What's a word that I can use here that's like quite sensitive and soft? Not um, less extreme, should we say? A little bit more snatural, like natural, but pushed up to the edge of what's like, oh, I could have it myself. So I will say the British type of makeup looks that this is, is too much for me. I used to work at MAC Cosmetics and quite often we would be asked to do things like this. I think what might be beneficial in this situation to create a more sort of like subtle yet effective look is to match the foundation to the neck. I know that people that quite often go for this type of makeup look are usually matching like a fake tan color or an artificial skin tone in order to appear more tanned. You can 
do that, but I think actually bronzing around the outside of the face is a much more snatural, harmonious way to create a tanned like skin without it being too mismatched from the rest of the body. I personally am not a fan of like huge thick eyebrows. I think huge thick eyebrows can sometimes work well. I feel like most makeup consumers and most makeup clients that I've had in my chair look best with like subtly enhanced but more defined brows. So quite often to me that means like not doing like full painted in brows. I know I have a full painted in brow but I do it in a way that's a little bit thinner than what I would naturally have in order to make it look more, I want to say elevated, is that a word? A little bit elevated? I feel like the contouring here is a little bit heavy. I feel like if you want to create a more natural harmonious look the contouring needs to be done from within if that makes sense. So my favorite thing to do is underpainting. And I mean like very sensitively placed underpainting. Quite a lot of makeup tutorials that you'll watch online don't translate onto everybody's face. And the reason why I say that is because quite often they'll say, you put your bronzer here, you do this here, you do this here. It's like, no, that it should be tailored for every single face. I don't need to have bronzer all the way across here. I like just a little bit under my cheekbones to warm up my already cold contour, just to give a little bit of color and life to the face. That is gonna be way more effective than just having a big stripe of contour. I like to apply contour into wet foundation and I also like to apply a little bit of highlighter into wet foundation as well because as you're blending that out and as you then go over to powder and then you apply a setting spray to give a more maybe slightly fresher dewier finish it all mixes in with each other and creates a much more soft look, less harsh. I do think she does have particularly full lips. I have three mil of filler in total in my lips right now. And I feel like she has a little bit more than that. I must admit though, I love that little uplifted part there with filler. I really want this so badly. I would say perhaps a less darker lip, something with a little bit more gloss right in the center, maybe just here as well. Maybe even keeping it a bit more nude and less contoured would create a much more subdued look. And I feel like that would be a lot more harmonious to the look that she's trying to achieve. Her features, she's got wonderful features to start with. Look at the size of her eyes, massive eyes, really good eyebrows. She's got a small forehead, lovely cheekbones, small features down here, but very big lips. Now, if we look down the center of her face, she has very strong brows, big eyes and big lips. These are really marvelous features to work with. I feel like just pulling focus to one of them is gonna create a lot more of that snatural look that I feel like she's going for. I don't know her personally, so I can't say that, but if she came to sit in my makeup chair, that's what I would focus on. But then again, I know British makeup culture is about the glam. You wanna transform the way you look. Totally get it. Pick up your Amazon Prime stick, honey, and click play. All right, what do we have here? Okay, we've got another like procedure hack. This is very biochemistry heavy today, isn't it, my lovelies? Okay, what do we have here? Botox prevention hack. Right. Ladies, I'm about to save you so much money on Botox and maybe Are help you? you prevent not even ever needing it. At least on your forehead. Oh, I <laughs> don't know. I feel like I'm being sold something. And a makeup artist had me put on my own mascara. Yes. And I went at it like this. I went. Oh, no. Like that, she goes, no, no. she goes, stop. <laughs> don't do that. Yes. What? Do what? Wrinkle your forehead yeah. when you put mascara on. Because when you do that, it's causing those wrinkles and you're holding that position for however long it takes you to do your mascara, multiple times a week, if not every day. And that is just gonna give you wrinkles prematurely. Yes. And I was like, what? And just doing my makeup, I just thought I'd share it with you guys because I'm 29 next month and I've never ever had Botox. I get facials and eat healthy. Are you sure? Um, that's my skin regimen. It's Are you sure? Look, I'm not gonna say she's straight up lying, but she's got the Botox skin texture. When I say that, I mean like she's got the Botox glow. Anyone here who's had Botox can recognize the Botox glow. I'm completely filled with Botox, so I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. My skin regimen. And so I just tilt my head up. Look up. Yep, this is excellent. And just put mascara on that way and I avoid that expression. Yes, also, perfect. Also, it kind of subconsciously just taught me when I'm talking to people, if I look surprised, I just use my eyes and I don't wrinkle my forehead. I don't even want to do it right now because I just don't like <laughs> forcing my eyebrows up so high. Also, if you get Botox, go for it. Who cares? You do whatever makes you happy. But hopefully this helps people um, save some money in the future. And um, if you are very expressionate, just be cautious. She's had Botox, the little fibber, little fibs. Oh, I did take little fibbles. I could be completely wrong, but let's talk about Botox, shall we? So I have had Botox here, 
here, here, and here. And this was recent, actually. I had it done probably about a month ago now. I can still move my eyebrows. I can still express. It's my favorite thing to get just a little bit of Botox, enough to help with anti-aging and actually also help with headaches, interestingly enough. Raise my eyebrows ever so slightly, but also prevent crinkling around the eyes. So when she smiled, you naturally create crinkles around the eyes. I've had Botox and I get crinkles around my eyes still, but I only have little ones because they get little Botox. I can't say that only ever doing mascara in this way will never ever give you forehead wrinkles. I am gonna say prevention is better than a cure. If you are mindful about how much you want to express your face, the chances are then you're going to have less wrinkles because of that. However, sometimes you're just gonna wrinkle up. I must admit, not using a muscle will allow it to atrophy over time, which means you are less likely to engage that muscle in the future. If you apply that science to the muscle around here, then it's gonna happen as well. I don't have the most wrinkly forehead, but I can definitely tell a difference when I've had Botox. I just don't have those deep, like, emotional lines. <laughs> So, what is Botox, my lovelies? Well, I recently had my Botox done by Faces by Roberto over on Instagram, a glorious, glorious practitioner here in London, my absolute favorite girls. He also did my lips a little while ago and he did them so beautifully. It is a very small amount of toxin, Botox, botulinum toxin. It is technically a neurotoxin. Is it a neurotoxin? I'm gonna use the word neurotoxin here, that might be incorrect. It is a nerve agent that paralyzes muscles. When when used in small quantities, it can actually reduce the movement of those muscles. So nerves in the body kind of have these nerve ending areas where they have a space between them. And neurochemicals transmit the nerve impulse between the ends of two nerves. Botox disrupts this and prevents those two nerves from communicating with each other, which is why you end up with a paralysis effect. Too much Botox and you end up frozen. Not enough Botox and it doesn't really have an effect, which is why sometimes with a practitioner it can take like two or three times to get the amount of Botox you need right. And the way that your metabolism works also determines how long the Botox will last for you. Some people get three months, some people get a year. I got a pretty rubbish metabolism, which means that fillers and Botox last quite a long time on me, which is great, but it also means that anything I eat immediately plumps me up, girl. Botox is actually a really, really easy procedure. I had lots of people asking me recently about my Botox experience. I actually posted a reel over on Instagram about it because I think everyone should try it out if you're not allergic to it. Like, 100% just go for it, girls. Like, if you're really worried about the way that your skin looks and any sort of aging, life is the longest thing that you are ever going to personally experience here on this planet. And if you feel like you benefit from just having a little bit of a touch up to make yourself feel better, do it. Don't feel guilty. Don't worry about what other people are gonna think. Just use your energy and focus on yourself, my lovelies. If I'd have worried what everyone else would have thought, I would never have been on this personal journey of discovery for me. I will say though that Botox is anti-aging, not de-aging. If you have really deep lines, they might need a little bit of extra work or a little bit of filler, or alternatively, they might take a lot longer for Botox to actually reduce those. Because over like the course of a few years of having them, you'll find that those wrinkles completely disappear because the skin has actually healed, which is great. Great. But will I say that just applying mascara in a very mindful way like this is gonna completely stop you from ever having forehead wrinkles? X to doubt, girls, X to doubt. Oh, we got an actual makeup video. Oh, back to makeup, girls. Right, what's this? This past weekend, me and my friends were turning heads in the Oh, not Shazza Tilbs. So for me, I Good old it to literally make my smile lines disappear. I'm sorry. Two over here, two. Gone. And if you know me and you've seen me in person, my smile lines are so deep. So this is crazy. The is a labial fold. My friend who is borrowing this has kind of some deep lines in her forehead and she put this on the lines of her Is this just a powder? Gone. And people in the bathroom were like, I just saw that, what product is that? This is the Charlotte Tilbury Press Powder. It's in the Mini shade airbrush to medium. Finish. The final finish on my skin oh, is Oh, the thing with social amazing. media is, look at her skin glowing, gorgeous. But when she zooms in, there is a little bit of texture because do you know what happens? I don't know what it is. Something about TikTok uploads or Instagram Reels uploads, it like blurs the skin in a way. Even if you take off the blurring filters, it still happens, my lovelies. I'm no stranger to a little bit of a filter over on Instagram because I find these pissing devices, I use an iPhone, the front-facing camera on these iPhones, disgusting. 
disgusting. It creates pores where there is no pores to begin with. So I feel like I always need to have a little bit of retouching. However, here I have no retouching and I feel like I look fine. For some reason, the front facing camera of this device gives me dysphoria, girls. Nobody wanted to marry you. But that's a conversation for another day. Will a powder remove your fine lines, wrinkles, or anything like that? Yes and no. Yes and also no. It's a bit more complicated than that. A powder cannot, cannot penetrate the skin, create a plumping effect and fill out those areas. If it did, that would be an amazing invention that would cost a lot more than just a mini available in your local like drugstore. I do actually believe there is a peptide that can penetrate the skin and force your body to create adipose tissue in those areas. I can't remember what it's called. If I can, I'll put it on the screen right here. It is very gray market though. The research is just being done. Like it's not available on the markets. If you can get hold of it, you're being naughty. Not endorsed by me. No, never do anything naughty children, never. You're having a fever dream. So a powder is technically a kind of like softening velvet kind of feeling substance that has the power to refract light Light in very specific ways. And within that light refraction is the disguising of wrinkles. It's the same reason why when we use like a highlighter here, it's creating the illusion of your cheekbone being like more forward and light catching. It's not actually moving your skin forward and catching the light because that would be well, that would break the laws of physics. Well, I suppose I could use a new hobby. A solar flare upon the face. Absolutely not in this economy. What are, have you not heard? There's a cost of living crisis. <laughs> However, in saying this, I do feel like there is uh, technology differences between powders. So I feel like the Charlotte Tilbury Mini Flawless Finish is probably a silicone talc hybrid powder. Now, silicone powders look amazing in real life. They really do give that flattening, mattifying, wrinkle disguising, like youthful appearance. However, as soon as you're in front of flash photography, you'll see them. We've seen many celebrities throughout this like season, this series already, have this issue. And there's the even really famous one with Janice Chalet's. Let me delve into the ingredients of Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, air, air, what's it called? Airbrush powdered pussy wig. Oh, it's now refillable. That's nice. That's actually a very good thing. Right, what's the ingredients? So the first line of ingredients are talc, mica, polymethyl, methacrylate, dimethicone, and silica. These are all natural minerals. You've got two types of silicone in there, which is good for light refraction. You've got talc, which will set the skin and everything in place. Talc molecules are so fascinating. They're kind of like, so silica is like ball shaped, but talc is like a squished shape like this. And it's really rare to actually have that in, um, in like the natural world, which is why talc is in like all powders unless you get talc free, of course. I'm not familiar with what polymethyl methacrylate is, but dimethicone and silica are both silicones, which is probably why this powder looks amazing. However, I am gonna say 38 pounds for a powder is so pricey. That's so pricey. Also, I'm not a huge fan of the brand of Charlotte Tilbury. There's something about it that just puts me off. There's also something off about Charlotte herself as well. I've made videos on her products before. She uses something called homosylate in her magic cream, which has been linked to, well, speculation linked to skin cancer. So I'm not interested. If you want to read more about homosylate, there is a great, uh, what's it called, article on PubMed that is titled, Homosylate boosts the release of tumor-derived extracellular vesicles with protection against anchorage. Mm, well worth the read, in my opinion. Oh, wow. scandalous. Right, we've got another, so we've got another makeup tutorial. Oh, but it's, uh, I already see, do you see? I already see the captions are saying, I just got my Botox touched up. Okay, well, if you just got it touched up, you shouldn't be wearing makeup for 24 hours, Emily. But let's see. Talks touched up and I have a family barbecue I need to go to. And a when you barbecue! Talks, I always wipe off your makeup. So yes. we are just gonna clear my base and re-get ready in the car. I forgot my moisturizer, which I need underneath my makeup for it to look good, you, but it's whatever. Uh, oh, this is the RMS sunscreen. It looks so freaking good. People always ask how much Botox I get, when I get it, how often I go. So typically I go like every four-ish months, yes? but okay. I've been going a little bit more conservative just so I don't get like heavy and have a heavy brow. And so this last time, I feel like it wore off like pretty quick. So she just added like a couple units. I'm literally obsessed that my injector goes light because I feel like talks always look so freaking good and I never look like 
too crazy. I'm just gonna say she should not be wearing makeup immediately after having a procedure like Botox done because she's at this point, like you have open wounds from the injection sites and you are just pushing in used cosmetics and nasties into the skin. So that's like not really recommended. But I will also say, if she's going to a practitioner that's giving her a heavy brow, that's too much Botox. Botox shouldn't move everything down. And if it does, your practitioner needs to inject elsewhere to create that lift the other way. And that's how you correct like asymmetry or Botox migration. But mm, okay, right, she's going to the barbecue, everybody. Listen, barbecue. And when I look heavy, it's not a good look for me. And with the e.l.f. halo glow in the color medium Works great for men though. Like is the most beautiful contour. I am kind of sad because I feel like my makeup was really makeuping this morning and it just doesn't ever look as good the second time around. Don't Uncombed wear concealer makeup is another to product I've procedures. Been it is so creamy and it just blends out like to perfection. I think I should start this getting ready in my car pretty more good often because I feel like the ultimate test like of your makeup is how it looks in natural light. Mm -hmm. And getting Tape. ready in natural light. You just have to apply it so much better. That with the Givenchy powder, and now Ooh. I'm just gonna bronze. She's a bougie oh, woman. Glass bronzer. This one just it makes your skin. Please it stop so putting makeup in bronzer. your injection but, and sites. Up, and I forgot to do my cream bronzer before I set everything, or cream blush before I set everything. Cream blush, yes. So cream brulee. I'm be doing that now. Just apply the creme brulee directly Milani to the Botox nerve. Blush. Just pull everything together. Okay, I'm really sad because I thought I packed my setting spray, but I didn't, so sucks to suck for me. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is use this Charlotte Tilbury powder. Oh look, powder see, the Tilbury powder. just eliminate any pores I have right here. Like, the Tilbury powder. Gone. Okay, bye guys. Okay, well that was nice. Oh, a lovely little makeup tutorial. I haven't watched a makeup tutorial in ages. Oh, I'm very 2008. Love that. I will say though, I think every Botox practitioner, every esthetician, I know there's some of you in the comments here, you always say, do not wear makeup the same day that you have something done. Like that's just common knowledge. Like to me, it's one of those things after I get Botox, quite often I'll have a headache or something because it is a procedure. I quite often get like a, re not a reaction, that's a bit much, but like my inflammatory response happens in my body. I get a bit like, oh, I kind of want to rest for a few days, you know, just sort of chill out, do a lighter workload, like not have to get, like not have to do anything. The last thing you want to do is have a massive event that you have to go for and you get everything done on the day or the day before. And then you're like, oh my God, I feel so Botox out of my eyeballs and it's just too much. So I would say find a good practitioner, start modestly, work out what's a good Botox range for you, what a decent Botox product is as well, because not everything is Botox and not everything needs to be Botox in my opinion. There are other brands that do just as well. I, do, I just think like, clear your diary. If you're gonna have something done, clear your diary. Ooh. But she looked gorgeous at the end there, didn't she? Stunning, should we have another look? Lovely skin, absolutely stunning. I love that little highlight glow that she used, the Givenchy powder, I'll have to look that up later. Mm. Well, my lovelies, we've seen it all today, haven't we? We've seen bursting plump lips that you couldn't even buy. <laughs> no, but I am very sad that she had a problematic, horrible lip reaction to those injectables. That's such a sad, like, uh, danger that sometimes just happens. And you know what's really weird as well? The human body is fascinating because sometimes it just decides. One day it's like, you know what? This thing that you've been using forever that's been wonderful and fine, today's not the day. I hate it. Die. Sometimes the human body is just like that. The only real thing that you can do is make sure that you choose a very good practitioner who knows what they're doing, who's got a huge bank of work either online or you can request it when you go to their clinic, but also that you trust and doesn't give you any icky vibes or anything like that. I don't think with lip fillers you can do a, a like the equivalent of a patch test. I know with hyaluronidase when I had to have my lip fillers dissolved because my previous practitioner botched my lip a little bit and left a ball of filler there, I had to have hyaluronidase of days injected into my arm and we had like a little like circle around it and she was like if you've had a reaction in 48 hours we probably won't be able to do it but it was fine so I could have it luckily that's what happens with hyaluronidase which is what lip filler dissolver is it's an enzyme that gently nibbles away the hyaluronic acid Ooh. Essentially, my lovelies, it's try and be a smart shopper when it comes to your procedures. And please, for the love of God, avoid plumping lip gloss. Oh! And with that, my lovelies, it's time for the Patreons. You can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my lovelies. Yes, you can. Also, we've had a burst of brand new Patreons here on the Chanel, my lovelies. Thank you so much for the additional support. And I want to say a massive hello and welcome to Barbara Roman, Becky Johnson, Violet Becky Bejoul, Hannah Ruth, Elizabeth Treat. Oh, trick or treat. Leanne Jones. 
Jones, Andra Rogers, Petra Martin, Jennifer McCarran, Isabel Sorensen, Emily McCarthy, Morgan LeVay, Emma, and Laura Hicks. Thank you guys so much for joining the Patreon. I'm sorry if I've missed any of you guys. Patreon's just introduced this new feature and it looks completely different. But I'm hoping that I've read everyone out. If I haven't, please let me know in the comments. Ah, I'm usually very good at my job. <laughs> As always, I want to say a massive thank you to my top tier Patronias. Orcos Emoji, Beebles32, Shell Herman, Christy Crownover, Christina Kyle, ContraPoints, Danielle, Elizabeth Stone, Emily Worsham, Eric Castillo, Finn Dunham, Jen Martin, Caitlin Wright, Larry Lane, Laura Jane, Les Banana, Lizette Cares, Min Min Tier, Mariah Sherman, Ms. Kiss, Novembrix, Paolo Rivera, Rubix.co, Ryan Vita, Slampire Queen, Steffi Tech, The Chaos Collective, Vicky Walsh, Victoria Carella, and so Sevier. And you know what, my loves? I'm going to leave it on the notes of don't put Tabasco on your lips, especially not on your cheeks. Beautiful.